Hi, this is Reverend Cindy Fuller, and this is your spiritual story number eight. And so it's just a small little ghost story. Um, you know, when you're working with spirit, sometimes you're asked to go places, and um, sometimes you don't know why. When, and we've done this many times. But this particular event occurred probably 10 years ago, and I was asked to go to a very small town, and this is one of the oldest towns in the South. It was founded in 1730. It still exists today. And I did not know why I was being asked to go there. But when I'm being asked what happens, Spirit gives me this uh, message and just asked me to go and do some work. So Patrick and I went and overnighted in this little town, and we stayed at a bed and breakfast. I still didn't know why we were there, what was going to happen. So as we settled in for the night, all the talking started. And it did not stop. Patrick is sleeping like a log, and the ghosts have gathered, and I am being put on trial. And this is very aggressive. This was even before the Scotland experience I told you about that collective. This was nowhere near as kind. And they were all gathering. There were hundreds of them, and it was, it was continual. Why are you here, and what are you doing? Why are you here, and what are you doing? And I said, I don't know why I'm here. God asked me to come, and I don't know what I'm doing here, I did not come to disrupt you. I haven't been given any guidance yet. So can I just get some sleep? I turned on every light in the hotel room. Patrick slept through the whole thing. And they did not stop all night long. I was interrogated and interrogated and interrogated. And they were hostile. Not like hurting me, but they were aggressive. They did not want me to bring the light to disturb them. So. That morning when I spoke with our host of the B&B, &B, she was quite surprised, but yet not. She didn't hear them, but she felt them often and knew that there was a lot of activity in her in her, um, in her B&B. &B. So what happens is that sometimes when spirits cross over and they don't want to go to the light, they'll stay in an area. And when they stay, they become sometimes an organized collective, so that if other people are dying as the years go by and they don't have a faith in God or don't want to cross to the light, they're kind of swept up into this vortex. And so we have this vortex full of beings that just have never crossed. And they could be from many, many different decades just gathering together. And that's what this was. There were some beings that were from the 1700s that were very uh, politically organized and then a collective after that. So this is what happened. Um, we checked out. And I'm like, thank God, i got to get some sleep. And I said, God, I do not know why you brought me here. I have no idea why you brought me here. I showed. I did what I said I was going to do. So we, as we were leaving, we were doing some tours of some of the buildings. And you know, you could look up in one of the buildings and literally see the ghost looking back at you. But I was never called to go deal with them. I would send love, but that wasn't my mission. And we went to a, a, one of our last places that we visited was a house outside of the town where a prominent family had lived. And the original owners, uh, the mom had had 11 children. Of course, not all of them reached adulthood. And as we're going through the tour of this house, and the guide is telling us this, a little girl peeks out from around some of the original furniture. And I knew she was one of the 11 children. She was a little bitty girl ghost staying in this house that had been empty for eons, but had attached herself to one piece of furniture that was from the original time that her parents were there. And I started to talk with her. And when I did, she told me that when she died, her mother was so sad, and there were so many other children, that she had to stay and help her mom. So this little spirit had stayed to help her mom go through life, and, but then her mom had gone and the children had gone, and she just never let go. She never let go of that location. And it was one of the most beautiful things. She was just this little girl, and we were, I was able to talk to her, and we brought an angel down, and the angel took her hand, and the angel lifted her to the light. And it was such a beautiful healing experience. And I walked out to the car with Patrick, and it's like, that's why I was asked to come. I wasn't asked to come for all the big ghosts that were there. I wasn't asked to come for the famous ghosts that were still walking in that building. I was asked to come for one little girl. And it was just so deeply um, 
heart warming to, to be used in that way, just to help her little spirit move on. So I share this with you. There are so many opportunities that we have in life to love and to help. And when you feel, when you're anywhere and you feel that um, presence of someone, always send love, always send a prayer. You don't have to uh, create a column of light for them. Just love them and ask that God can take them where they need to be. And this little girl was so far off the beaten path, no one had even seen her. So I hope that was of interest to you, and I hope that you take a little bit more awareness with you when you travel. Till next time, Cindy Fuller. Yay, God.